to video or not to video? That is the question. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and today we're gonna to talk about perfecting our form. In my last video, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here or in the description below. I talked about trying not to throw hard, using less effort, but better form, and perfecting our form in order to get more distance, better accuracy, whatever it was. But in that video, I also warned at something that I want to discuss just really quickly. And I really don't have a script for this. Uh, this was this is off the cuff, but it, it, Josh from Overthrow and Yanni, uh, the spin doctor, both touched on this in uh, recent videos of theirs. And I had planned to do this one a while ago, but life and work and biz busyness just got, has gotten in my way. Um, but I wanted to get this out because I, I feel like this is important, especially from my point of view. And, and I'm assuming if I deal with it, there's other people out there that deal with the same thing. And what I want to talk about today is over analyzing our form. I, I, I am, I'm guilty of, of this, um, because I am a coach, I am very methodical when it comes to my approach to sports but I'm also very detail oriented and very nitpicky. And I tend to overdo some things. And I have access, we have access to amazing coaches and, and people that have, have done this for years. Uh, I'm part of the Power Disc Golf Academy and we have four, five coaches now, because we added Jake Wolf, that have a lot of knowledge in the game and break down form very meticulously and very well. Uh, Josh from Overthrow does the same thing. Um, Robbie C's out there. But we have a myriad of avenues for coaching and helping us with our form in disc golf. But the information overload that it, we can present ourselves with can be a hurtful thing as much as it can be a helpful thing. And when it starts hurting us is when we start over analyzing what we do. We simply have too many choices. We have too many choices when it comes to watching videos of people with their opinions and their methods. Too many options when it comes to coaches that we can choose from. So it, it, it just, it becomes confusing. It becomes disorienting. It, it, it gives us ADD, disc golf ADD is 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 what I approach and and maybe I'm the only one here so how do we combat this how do how do we how do we fix when we start over analyzing what we do and both Josh and Yanni said the same thing and, and, and I've heard Josh on his form reviews uh, if you if you don't watch them go you need to go watch Josh's form reviews but I, I've heard him give advice to people turn the camera off just just turn it off and I think that's brilliant advice, brilliant advice. Uh, and, and if you know me, that's, that's a big deal for me to say, because I love to film. I love to watch film. I love to analyze form. I love to nitpick and critique, but the problem becomes I, I start getting into where is my foot in my X step? How am, how am I planting? What angle, what degree? Where's my hand? What's the angle of my wrist? I think we get into a mode where we critique ourselves too much to where our throw is then becomes robotic and it, and it has nothing to do with feel. And, and we're not machines. We're not, we, we shouldn't be robotic in, in our form. We're all made differently. So, so do this for me. Do, go and pull up videos of Paul McBeth, Calvin Heimberg, Ricky Wysocki, and James Conrad, and watch them side by side, and tell me what you see. All four of them compete and win at the highest level possible. I think, 
three of the four are world champions. And yet, they all throw differently. Stop trying to copy people. Stop trying to get the textbook form. The best form for each one of us is the form that our body allows us to have. Our biomechanics for all of us are different. We're different heights, we're different weights, we're different shapes. Our joints move differently because the positioning of our either our muscles or the, our, our actual joints themselves allow us to move in different ways. Our flexibility allows us to move in different ways. We're different people. So there has to be an allowance for differences in how we throw the disc than how someone outside of ourselves throws the disc. Now, I'm not saying don't video yourself. I'm not saying don't ever critique your form. What I'm saying is make sure that we're doing those within the confines and the limitations that they need to be set in. Give ourselves allowances for how our angling is and how our weight shifting is and how our reach back is. There are things, I get it, there are things that need to be set in stone, right? And if you watch those four people that I commented on, the four of them at certain points are basically the same, right? Simon Lazat has a video in the Power Disc Golf Academy. Uh, if you're not part of the Power Disc Golf Academy, you need to go out and join because tidbits like this are vital. He said there are two points that you need to video, two points in your form that you need to video and make sure are correct. And outside of that, it's just fine tuning. But there are two points in your form that need to be videoed and need to be concrete. And that's it. So let's stop overanalyzing ourselves and start realizing that when we are comfortable, that's when we're throwing the best. So turn the camera off. Turn it off for two, three, four, five days. Turn it off. Grab your discs and then go to a field, right? Go to a field where you can see the disc fly and get comfortable with your throw and get comfortable with how your body feels and make adjustments on the fly in the field without a camera just by feeling where your body is and what you want it to do. We all know our backswing needs to be out of way so we can get into a power our power pocket needs to be here right we all know the specific points that need to be focused on the major points that need to be focused on work on those without the camera we need to be able to feel how our bodies move through our form seeing it you can see it until the end of time but if you can't feel it you can't change it so the first thing we need to do is be able to feel our form, feel the way our body moves and how we are getting into the positions that we need to get in. Make that adjustment first. Once that is established, then you can turn the camera back on and start worrying about, okay, where am I in my full backswing? Where am I in my power pocket? Where am I at release? Hit the major points of your form. Worry about those. Only when you have the major points established and you know you're reaching back well, your disc path is good, your power pocket is good, your release is good, only then should we ever start thinking about nitpicking all the other small aspects that really don't... I mean, if you look at Calvin Heimberg, he doesn't even straighten his arm. His arm is bent, right? There, there are so many nuances to the four people that go against the common, you must do this to tell me that mm, it's not really you must do this. So, put the cameras down, learn your body, learn your throw, get comfortable in your throw, and then start to analyze your throw. And the last piece of advice I'm gonna give here is if you're serious about this, if you're serious about getting better, if you're serious about competing, get a coach. Uh, I was, went without a coach for a very long time, and I can tell you it, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, and can you get better? Yeah, for sure you can. Uh, but having someone that takes your form and looks at it and gives you, sorry, I hit my mic there, take, takes your form and looks at it and gives you individualized feedback. 
is invaluable uh, to getting better more quickly. And, and I get it. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that they're like, I don't have, you know, 50 bucks a month to spend on a coach. It doesn't have to be a pro coach. It just has to be someone that you respect, trust, know, knows the game, uh, and has the time and willingness to help you out. I'm here. Uh, my Instagram is in the description below. Uh, you can always reach out to me. I'm always willing and able to help. I have the backing of some of the best coaches in the industry um, at my disposal with the Power Disc Golf Academy and working with Josh from Overthrow. You know, we can work something out. Uh, so just hit me up and, and, and I'm more than willing to help out. But if you really want to make changes more quickly, more effectively, a personalized coach is just the way to go. And be careful, be careful about the coach you get because of what we just talked about. We're all different. We all move differently. Uh, our bodies function differently. Uh, the four top pros that I talked to all have different, very, very different forms. Be careful of a coach that is going to put you into his form. You want a coach that puts your form into you, right? I, I liken this, I'm a football guy, I liken this to um, Jim Harbaugh. I'm a Ravens fan, sorry, don't hate me. I probably just lost some followers for that one. But uh, I, I liken this to John Harbaugh, not Jim, his brother. John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson, right? Before Lamar Jackson, the Ravens were a completely different team. And John Harbaugh knew that if we want to succeed, I have to tailor my offense to meet Lamar Jackson's needs and not the other way around. Same thing with our disc golf throw. Do not go to a coach who is going to tell you, you have to throw this style in order to be successful because it's not true. Ask Paul McBeth, ask Kelvin Heinberg, ask Ricky Wysocki, ask James Conrad. It's not true. You need a coach that's going to look at you and look how you throw and say, okay, now we need to modify your throw to fit you because there are all kinds of forms that deliver success in this sport. Well, there are my rantings. There's my soapbox. Uh, I hope this helped. I hope this was insightful and informative to you. Uh, you got something out of it. Again, reach out to me if you want to. Uh, I'm, again, more than willing to help uh, at any time, and I will do my best, and I will not try to help you if I can't. I promise you that, right? I will not try to help you if I can't. I will tell you, I don't think I can help your form is beyond the scope of what I can do right now. I'm, I'm new into the coaching aspect of this, but I'm going to learn. And uh, with your help, we can get there. So good luck to you as you're improving your game. Thanks for coming along with me. And until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.